What's going on, everyone? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it might be. Hello. Uh, culture shock. Driving in Germany versus the USA. Life in Germany as an American expat. There can't be that many differences, is there? This will be interesting to see. I'm actually teaching my wife to drive right now. Well, I wouldn't say, I'm not like officially teaching, but in Canada, you start out, at least in British Columbia, where we are, you have to start out with what they call the L, uh, which is a learner's license. And you have to have this red sticker on the back of your vehicle. So everybody knows that you're a, you're a learner or a learner is driving. And then I have to be in the vehicle at all times with her while she practices until she's able to take her... The next step up is an N, which then you get a green placard on the back of your vehicle with a new driver. So N stands for new driver. You have to have that for another year. So you have to have the L for a year. Then you have to have the N. The L might be six months, but I think it's a year. Then you have to have the N for another year, maybe two. And she can only drive with one passenger. Seems kind of a stupid rule to me. If she's allowed to drive by herself. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I don't know about much about driving in Germany. All right, this is uh, I'm Mace. Welcome to Until I Go. Let's get to it. Hello, everyone. This is Lee, and we are on a nice Sunday drive in Germany on a on the autobahn. Kind of a gray, cold, rainy November day, so it's not so beautiful. So out here driving on the uh, wonderful German Autobahn and uh, thought I would talk a little bit about driving in Germany versus driving in the United States, maybe compare and contrast, talk about pros and cons of both places. Um, so a big... Um, so I'm in Canada, but we have very similar driving uh, situation as the States. The thought of most Americans when they think about driving in Germany is that, oh, I can't wait to get there and get on the Autobahn, uh, no, speed no speed limits, limits yeah. drive anywhere you want to with no speed limit as fast as you want to go all around the country. And, um, you know, you get from A to B super, super fast. Well, that is... There's some fine print. Entirely true. Right. right. So there are places on the Autobahn that have no speed limits, and sometimes it is, it's really fantastic. It can be really great. If you get on one of those stretches, there's no speed limit, we can find a time when there's not much traffic, and you can just put the hammer down, and you can fly. And uh, it can be really, really nice sometimes. But there are also lots of times where there are speed limits. The Autobahn does have speed limits. Um, I'm slightly worried how his eyes are off the road. <laughs> um, he's fine. For example, in obviously in, in urban areas where high population, lots of traffic, speed limit um, tends to go down, uh, tends to go down lower. Uh, also, and the Makes bane sense. of my existence in driving in Germany, um, the construction sites, the Baustelle, and it seems like they are everywhere and sometimes it seems like you can't drive more than two or three kilometers without running into another construction site and so um, the lanes get smaller everything compresses down the speed limit goes down and uh, it can be very very um, stressful and very um, uh, you know um. see that's the thing like that last video I reacted to uh, the young lady was speaking about how the roads are so perfect and she kind of, you know, the video was talking about all the positives of living in Germany. But I want to know the nitty gritty. I want to know the, like the, the, the bad and the good, right? Um, before I, before I get over to Europe and plan my trip. Uh, yeah. Frustrating to drive in those situations. Um, it's very the so same. There's the it's very the same here in Canada. We have construction zones, and it's annoying, especially if you're in the city because the traffic is already congested, uh, and then you know you got to go so slow, slow through those zones, right? And it's, it's terrible. Um, also, in tunnels for 
some reason any tunnel you get to if you're on the Autobahn, maybe you're driving somewhere really smooth and there's no speed limit and you may be going at a, you know, we in America we would say 100 miles per hour, uh, around 160 kilometers per hour, um, you know, 120 miles per hour, 180 kilometers per hour. Um, so you may be going really fast. So 160 kilometers an hour, 180 kilometers an hour. That's no joke, baby. That's no joke. And then all of a sudden you hit this tunnel and for really no reason, the, the speed limit just goes down to 80 kilometers per hour, which is approximately 48, 50 miles per hour. Yeah, it's pretty slow. And so you have to slow down, you go through the tunnel. Now I get it. I'm sure there's a safety reason for that. Um, you know, they don't want people driving too fast through the tunnels. You know, a lot of bad things can happen. Um, but some of it seems a bit excessive. And then you really have to watch. And if you don't slow down, they have these these cameras, um, the blitzers. Um, they'll wee, take your wee, picture wee, if you're driving wee. too fast, if you're breaking the speed limit. And then a few weeks later, you'll get a nice letter in the mail saying, hey, um, you were driving 120 kilometers per hour and then 80 kilometer per hour zone and you get a nice ticket, right? So there's that, lots of tickets. Now, what's nice about driving in Germany, other than the times when you do hit a nice stretch of Autobahn where there's not much traffic and there's no speed limit, um, German drivers tend to uh, know the rules of the road and they tend to follow them very well. So slow. That's good to hear. That's what you want, right? Uh, I love watching those YouTube videos, like stupid driver fails and crashes. Like there's so many stupid drivers that cause so much heartache for themselves. If they would just slow down a little bit, be patient. Vehicle stay in the right lane. You only get in the left lane to pass. Um, they know. Um, same here. Same who here. Has the right of way, and they're very good at following the rules. So that makes traffic, for the most part, flow pretty smoothly. Now, Americans, on the other hand, we don't really know the rules, or if we know the rules, we just don't follow them. And, and we get away with it to a certain extent in the United States, in North America, because there's just not as much traffic, right? So there's not as much traffic, so you can kind of ignore some of the rules. Uh, but every time I go back to the United States and I drive on the freeway, I get really, really frustrated at all of you who don't know the rules. And you might See, that's the biggest thing with driving, right? You can be the perfect driver. You can have the perfect like driving record, and you're amazing. It's the other stupid people on the road that are driving giant killing machines that don't know how to drive and you know they're looking at their phones or they're drinking and driving or they're they just don't know the rules of the road they're going in and out of lanes like yeah might be driving really slow over the left hand lane and so yeah that's um, so annoying it's problematic that pisses and me the off United states had the uh, volume of traffic on the roads that germany does uh, the way we drive, I think it would be very, very problematic. Um, yeah, so Germans know the rules. Um, you know, there's nice places with no speed limit. The roads tend to be in very good condition. So that kind of, uh, you know, you, you, got, you can't have it both ways. You got to have roads in good condition and you also have to have road construction, right? So um, sometimes I think their road construction is a bit excessive. Sometimes it seems like they repair roads that don't even need to be repaired yet, but there you have it. The roads tend to be in very, very good good shape. They're very thorough. Now, the nice thing about driving in the United States, I kind of alluded to this already, is that we just don't have the volume of traffic. So you can, you know, you can get on the highway and you can drive for miles and miles sometimes and you may not see another car, depending on where you're at. And a lot of my European friends who have been to North America, that's one of the things they always comment on is like, man, it's so nice driving in, in North America because there's no traffic on the roads, right? So they really like that. You know, they like driving across uh, Texas or across. Yeah, it depends where you are, right? If you're going across the prairie in the United States or Canada, there's not going to be a lot of traffic. But if you're driving in Los Angeles or New York City area or hell, go to Seattle. The traffic is atrocious on the freeway going, on the big freeway, whatever that freeway is going into Seattle. It's it's sketchy. It's like five or six lanes. Like, it's crazy. And the traffic's horrendous. So I guess it depends where you are. The traffic in Vancouver is very, very bad. 
Uh, it's sketchy driving in Calgary because, especially in the winter, because the roads can get icy as hell. And, you know, driving in Toronto is an absolute nightmare on the 401. Oh my, that's got to be the worst traffic in the world. Across the western United States, you know, miles and miles and miles of, of nice highway with uh, not much traffic. Toronto! Alright, so here we are driving through a Beautiful. Nice stretch of Autobahn on this gray, a little rainy November day. And one thing you might... So does Autobahn just translate literally to highway? Because, like, it, it looks very similar to one of our highways here in Canada. Notice, now, this is a, this is a very nice piece here because um, there's not a lot of traffic. And I'll show you over here, if you look on the other side, there are a lot of... I'm slightly worried with his, like, directing with the video camera while he's driving, but it's fine. Trucks stopped over there. And Truck stop. that is because in Germany on Sunday... Trucks are not allowed to drive on the Autobahn, so Sunday could be a very nice day to drive. Uh, so if you're out and about, <laughs> what? Um, How do they get deliveries done? Drive on the weekend. Sometimes Sunday can be very, very nice. Now, the bad thing about driving on Sunday is if it's a school holiday, everybody else is driving too. So even though there right. aren't any trucks on the road, sometimes Sundays holidays can, can be a gong be show. Is what he's saying. Horrendous for traffic here in Germany. Yeah, so I talked about some of the advantages of driving in the United States. Um, you know, talked about the lack of traffic uh, or the reduced amount of traffic, the re reduced volume. Reduced. Another thing, a couple of other things that's nice are the roads tend to be bigger, they're wider, um, there's more shoulders on the road. So, for example, sometimes here in Germany, there's no shoulder. So, um, you know, driving is great and everything, and it's great to have your own autonomy and freedom, but realistically, us as a human race, we should have better modes of transportation at this point. Like, don't get me wrong, I love having my vehicle and being able to go wherever I want, whenever I want. I think the necessity for a vehicle is there, but there's also a lot of areas where we don't really need to be driving. Like, all of these highways could just be equipped with, like, high-speed trains or something. Like, so... A bunch of people would just get on there and then share the cost. And if you have a, if you need to go on a big hiking trip or a camping trip, or you should have a vehicle maybe. But I still think like the fact that humans still like have highways and city roads that are just packed and traffic jams. It's it's dumb. <laughs> if you have to pull over, it can be really challenging. The lanes get yeah. really narrow. Especially in those road construction areas, the lanes can get really narrow. So if you have a wide vehicle, you know, most Europeans tend to, um, you know, drive fairly small cars, certainly not as big as we have in the United States. So if you have a bigger Super vehicle, it's really me. challenging navigating these uh, small lanes. And uh, of course, through the old villages, um, some of these roads just weave through old uh, medieval buildings. So that could be difficult as well. Parking can be very challenging in Germany and in Europe in general. Parking spots are much smaller, much more cramped in. They can't be so, and that's nice in the United States or North America in general to have big parking spots and it's much easier to park your car. So, I know. That's one thing we gotta work on with uh, my wife is parking, parking lots and parking spaces and parallel parking, which is going to be it's going to be fun to teach her that. Uh, it's, you know, you kind of just got to get in there and do it, right? Um, a lot of people just want to come to Germany, hit the Autobahn, and drive as fast as they can all the time. And there are places you can do that, but it is certainly not everywhere. And I would say on average, everywhere, if you're going on a road trip, and let's say you're driving 300 miles, um, and you're going to do most of that on the German Autobahn, even though a large part of that may have no speed limit, it, it, most of the time it's going to take you longer to drive, take you more time to drive 300 miles in Germany uh, than it would in the United States, simply because of the road construction, the reduced speed limits, and the amount of volume of traffic on the roads, right? So those are huh. some of the differences, some of the pros and cons. And So I live on an island, and it takes about two and a half to three hours to drive how many kilometers like 350 kilometers something like that from one you can drive from one end of the island all the way to the other 
end in about five hours. Hope you enjoyed it's a big video. island. Learn something from it. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Follow us, and uh, we'll try to give you uh, more great information about life in Europe and uh, life in Germany. Thanks. Good stuff. I like the video. Um, I love hiking. I see that he also has hiking videos and things like that. I would definitely love to get some hikes in with the wife when, you know, if we get over to Germany and Europe and some some real some real nature experience, which is something that we love and we would love to do vlogs and stuff like that. We do have a travel website that we're working on, getting going. Um, yeah, very cool video. Driving, it, it's like, it feels like it's becoming a... It's still a necessity for so many people, but there's so many inefficiencies with it that I wonder how obsolete it will become and how quickly it will become obsolete. But we just don't seem to be developing. Like, I feel like, you know, people always talk about technology advancing so quickly. And it did from 19... late The late 80s or the early 90s to now or 2015 2020 it accelerated extremely fast but it seems like now we've reached a bit of a stagnation period or people are just becoming more stupid and they're not as aware of <laughs> you know people are on their devices constantly right so they're becoming more and more stupid and they're not reading as much and etc etc anyways uh thanks for joining me Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video and all of that good stuff. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace out, people. Verabschiedung. Verabschiedung. Did I say it right? Did I remember it? Verabschiedung. Goodbye.